What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. My name is Michael. I hope you are having an awesome day. So we got some more history action. This time we got World War I, 1914. I had done Oversimplifies History of World War I. Got this as a recommendation. Wanted to go ahead and check it out because history is amazing. It's awesome. It's really cool to learn about a lot of different things. That being said, drop some suggestions of future historical elements or videos or whatever it may be in the comments below and be sure to subscribe and let's get into this video. It's pulling you in. Ooh. 1914. The great powers of Europe are divided into two rival alliances. The Triple Entente. France, Britain, and Russia, united by fear and suspicion. I mean, just right off the bat, so we know that this is like the Allied side, and just look at where they are strategically. They're on the west and the east, they have a little bit up north, and they're just kind of entrapping. And so geographically, it's just very, very, you know, it's just a massive chokehold. Of Germany, Craziness. Europe's new strongest power. What? And the Triple Alliance. Germany, which fears encirclement by its rivals. There you go. Austro-Hungary, clinging on to a fragile empire. And Italy, seeking gains at French expense. The spark comes on the 28th of June in the city of Sarajevo. Hmm. Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, is assassinated by a 19-year-old Slav nationalist named Gavrilo Princip. Austro-Hungary accuses its Balkan rival, Serbia, of having aided the assassin and sends an ultimatum demanding humiliating concessions. Serbia rejects the ultimatum and Austro-Hungary declares war. Wow. Within hours, Austrian forces are shelling Belgrade. The Russian Tsar, Nicholas II, feels honor bound to defend Serbia, a fellow Slav nation and orders the Russian army to mobilize. German Emperor Wilhelm II has promised his support to Austro-Hungary. He and his generals see conflict with Russia as inevitable, and the sooner the better, as Russian strength grows year on year. Jeez. Russian mobilization is used to justify German mobilization, followed by a declaration of war on Russia. Germany knows war with Russia means war with Russia's ally, France. It has developed the Schlieffen plan to meet this threat of a war on two fronts. First, its armies will advance rapidly through neutral Belgium to encircle and destroy hmm. French armies near Paris and win a quick victory. Then its forces can move... Well, looking at it, and you know, if we're looking at the historical elements, obviously World War II, you know, Hitler made a massive mistake invading Russia, but we're also seeing the two-front war and how dangerous it is to fight that two-front two war. We saw it with Napoleon, now we're seeing it once again with Germany. So Germany, you know, with their Schleifen plan, trying to go ahead, you know, it seems to, you know, kind of just in a sense like a, we'll call it a mini blitzkrieg in the sense that they're just trying to blow away the enemy real quick to the point that way they can focus back on Russia when Russia is mobilized because Russia is just, you know, taking forever. They're super slow. But it's crazy to see the two front strategy though. East to deal with Russia, whose huge army will take much longer to mobilize. And so Germany declares war on France. Six million men are now marching to war across Europe. Italy, however, remains neutral. The terms of the Triple Alliance don't bind it to join an offensive war. The United States also declares its neutrality. President Wilson and the American public have no desire to get entangled in Europe's war. Britain Smart. is France's ally, but at first it's not clear if it will join the war against Germany. But when German troops invade Belgium, whose neutrality Britain has guaranteed, an ultimatum is sent from London to Berlin, demanding they withdraw. It's ignored, and Britain declares war. Oof. A 
British expeditionary force lands in France, while the German invasion is held up for crucial days by Belgian resistance at the fortress city of Liège. German troops commit several massacres against Belgian civilians. The atrocities are inflated by Allied propaganda and help turn public opinion in neutral countries against Germany. France, unaware of Germany's great encircling attack, launches Plan 17, an offensive into German territory. But in the Battle of the Frontiers, they're driven back with enormous losses on both sides. The British... Wow. I mean, just the sheer amount of carnage. We're seeing 329,000 French and 250,000 or 256,000 German. And we're seeing the cause of trench warfare. So one of the bands that have been reacting to the Sabaton, Sabaton's historically based, and it's really cool to see the historical elements and then they do put it into a song. And then seeing the movies and different media about World War One, and we're just seeing the brutal nature of this is the minute you, you know, you're basically locked up in a trench, you're seeing casualties like this and it's just a massive stalemate of human carnage. Expeditionary force clashes with the German army at Mons. But the British are heavily outnumbered and soon join the French in retreat. The Allies make their stand at the River Marne, 40 miles outside Paris. Their desperate counterattack saves the city and drives the Germans back. Both sides suffer a quarter of a million casualties. The race to the sea begins as both sides try to outflank each other to the north. A series of clashes leads to the First Battle of Ypres, where the Allies desperately cling on and prevent a German breakthrough. There are more heavy losses on both sides. The two armies then dig in along the entire 350-mile front, seeking so the past few, you know, clips that they've shown of the casualties, they're pretty similar, you know, plus or minus a decent amount, or, you know, a little amount, but trench warfare, we're already seeing that, the stalemates, we're seeing these pictures right here where they're just lined up in the trenches, where it's basically sheer manpower, it's like I shoot, you shoot back, we charge, you charge, and they're just going back and forth, so we're seeing similar amount of casualties and nothing's getting done. Being shelter from Craziness. deadly machine gun fire and artillery shells. Unbelievable. Trench warfare has begun. Unbelievable. British warships win the first naval battle of the war at Heligoland Bight, sinking three German cruisers. Britain has the most powerful navy in the world, 29 modern battleships to Germany's 19. They now impose a naval blockade on Germany, preventing contraband goods, including food, from reaching it by sea. The aim is to bring Germany's economy to its knees and force it to surrender. But a week later, the British cruiser HMS Pathfinder becomes the first victim in history of a lethal new weapon, the submarine-launched torpedo. German submarines, or U-boats, have a surface range of 9,000 miles and can attack undetected from beneath the waves. They herald a deadly new challenge to Britain's command of the seas. Nine thousand mile range. Sir. On the Eastern Front, Russian armies invade East Prussia, but they blunder into disaster at the Battle of Tannenberg, where General von Hindenburg and his chief of staff Erich Ludendorff mastermind a brilliant German victory taking 90,000 prisoners and destroying an entire Russian army. Wow. The Russians contribute to their own defeat by transmitting uncoded wireless messages. A second massive German victory at Masurian Lakes forces the Russians into retreat. In just six weeks, the Russian army suffers nearly a third of a million casualties. Wow. Meanwhile, Austro-Hungary's invasion of Serbia suffers a humiliating reverse at the Battle of Tsar. Austro-Hungary's offensive against Russia also ends in disaster and retreat, 
with the loss of more than 300,000 men. The fortress town of Chemischol is cut off and besieged by the Russians. The Germans are forced to come to the rescue, launching a diversionary attack towards Warsaw. It leads to weeks of brutal winter fighting around the Polish city of Łódź, but there is no clear winner. Meanwhile, the Turkish Ottoman Empire has joined the Central Powers, declaring war on its old enemy, Russia. Turkish warships bombard the Russian ports of Odessa and Sevastopol, while in the Caucasus, Russian troops cross the Turkish frontier. Wow. Beyond Europe, the war rages on the world's oceans and in far-flung European colonies. German troops cross into British East Africa, modern Kenya, and occupy Tavata, while Allied forces seize the German colony of Togoland, modern Togo. But British forces invading German Cameroon are defeated at Garoa and Nsangakong. While a 3,000 strong force oh. attacking German Southwest Africa. I mean, it's just crazy even to see the colonial aspect of this. We're seeing a lot of battles in, um, excuse me, in Africa. We're seeing them, the major conflicts happening in Europe, but we're also seeing the expansion of the colonies and the attacks that are happening there. You know, we're seeing at a large, smaller scale, but still, you know, these, this, you know, what I mentioned in the other video of oversimplified and like kind of re, you know, becoming reacquainted with World War One and kind of the framework of it is this war was extremely brutal, extremely dead, deadly. I mean, we saw the conflicts, we saw gas being used and all these different things. And this video has done a great job explaining 1914 and literally the foundation. But this war more so, you know, based off like what I'm seeing really set the foundation for World War Two, which was even more deadly by the framework of what's going on the punishments you know the colonization aspects you know colonies being destroyed territories being destroyed countries merging you know creation of new territories all of that within one unbelievable Namibia is captured at San Fontaine a month later British landings at Tanga end in chaos and defeat at the hands of a much smaller German force led by Colonel von Lettoff Vorbeck Cut off from Germany, Letov Vorbeck goes on to wage a highly successful guerrilla war against the Allies, tying down huge numbers of troops. In Asia, Japan honors its treaty with Britain and declares war on Germany. Oh, Japanese right? forces go on to seize the German naval base at Tsingtao. The German colonies of Samoa and New Guinea surrender to troops from New Zealand and Australia. But in the Pacific, off the coast of Chile, German Admiral wow. von Spee's powerful East Asia squadron sinks two British cruisers at the Battle of Coronel. Both ships are lost with all hands. Wow. Five weeks later, he runs into a British naval task force at the Falkland Islands. Four of the five German cruisers are sunk. Von Spee goes down with his flagship. Wow. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, British troops seize control of the Ottoman port of Basra, securing access to the vital Persian oil that fuels the British fleet. I didn't realize the extent of what was going on with this war. Like, we're seeing conflicts in Australia, New Zealand, you know, in the Samoas, and in the Falkland Islands. Like, this truly is encompassing the majority of the continents on Earth at the time. And this is this the year 1914. We have multiple years coming after this. And just seeing the amount of territory that is being attacked and battles being fought there, it's unbelievable. Wait, what? That winter, Austrian troops finally capture Belgrade. But the Serbs then counterattack and drive them back once more. The fighting in Serbia has already cost around 200,000 casualties on each side. In the North Sea, German warships mount a hit and run raid against English coastal towns, shelling Hartlepool, Whitby, and Scarborough and killing more than a hundred civilians. 
On the Western Front, the French launched their first major offensive against the German lines. But the first Battle of Champagne leads to small gains at a cost of 90,000 casualties. While in the Caucasus, an Ottoman offensive through the mountains in midwinter ends in disaster at Sarikamish. Turkish casualties total 60,000, many frozen to death. On the Western Front, that first Christmas is marked in some sectors by a short truce and games of football in no man's land, the killing zone between the trenches. That is most definitely a crazy year to say the least. Many more crazy years to follow after that. We've seen that throughout history. We are currently living in a pretty crazy year, as most of you guys watching this are directly affected by that, and I'm sure you understand. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sure did. If you do have any recommendations, please leave them in the description or comments below. Be sure to like, turn on those bell notifications, and subscribe. And as always, stay healthy, stay happy, and have a blessed day. Peace.